wanted to be back in the kitchen cooking and um, we ran a an Instagram poll a few days ago of what we should cook next and thankfully the winner was one of my favourite Spanish dishes which is carriadas or cheeks and uh, we're going to use Neil Powell ox cheeks from Herefordshire cooked in Pedro Jimenez sherry. Um, it's just the most unbelievably rewarding dish once it's finished and it's perfect comfort food for the rainy week we're having this week. Um, but we're going to use sort of lockdown tactics and cook two recipes. So tomorrow's video or the next video, I'm going to use the same ingredients and show you what we could do. This may give you a little bit of an insight and inkling, uh, but essentially you're using the same cheap cut to go a very long way and feed lots of people in a really authentic, beautiful, beautiful style. So the ox cheeks today, um, going to be cooked in all your sort of braising veg. This is this week's box from the, the local Zero Waste shop. Got peppers, onions, garlic, uh, celery, leeks, carrots. Uh, got uh, herbs from the garden, olive oil, Nura pepper paste, which is a, a classic Spanish pepper. If you haven't got that, you can just use uh, tomato puree, obviously smoked paprika, your beautiful Pedro Jimenez sherry, some red wine, and some lovely beef stock. If you haven't got your own beef stock, most people wouldn't, understandably, use a stock pot from the supermarket, or these days you can get like your finest range used like their um, ambient pouches of stocks. They're really, really good quality. So I'm gonna get this on the go and chop, 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 start searing off and we'll see you in a sec. Ready to crack on with main cook now. Just talk quickly about these ox cheeks. Um, really, really good value. Please get them off your local butcher. Like any cheap cut, these are part of the animal which obviously do a lot of work. So they're gonna take a lot of cooking, slow, low and slow. So treat them like, I know this is a classic Spanish recipe, but treat it like you're cooking a casserole at home. It's no more difficult than that, okay? What I've done, I'm keeping them whole for now and just heavily salt and pepper them. Uh, for this, we don't need any um, flour. We can create a lovely consistency of sauce without the flour, okay? It's gonna be hot. Olive oil in, good olive oil. And, cheek, cheek, cheek. Now we wanna get great caramelization and color off those. So a good minute or two on each side, really dark colour, it's going to give extra layer of flavour, so you're starting to build your flavour layers like I said with other recipes. Whilst that's going on, just come back here sorry, to the veg. Good idea that you just get everything prepped up ready, okay? Kept the veg fairly neat, not OTT, but not too rough. And similar size, with the celery, your carrots, your peppers, your onions, your leeks, etc. Uh, one head of bulbar garlic just in half and that uh, rosemary and thyme we would say. That's starting to colour up. You can take as long as you like over this bit if you like. And a good crust on there like you would with a steak. Uh, lovely colour here. That's caramelised enough. And then what you want to do with this bear is just get it to pick up all the sediments and cooking juices from in there. So, you know, not be too clever about it, get it all in. Sweat that down for a good 10 15 minutes, keep stirring regularly. This veg has uh, sweated off beautifully. Lovely, lovely smell coming from it. Caramelization, it's all softened. So, chuck the cheeky cheeks in. And we're gonna start building this flavor now. I'm gonna cook that out for a couple of minutes in with the veg. Leave the rest of them, need a new one of these. It's all right. Don't be shy with the tomato puree as well. Mild. Smoke paprika. Again, when I write this recipe up, I'll give you the exact measurements. This amazingly sweet Pedro Jimenez, okay? This is one of the sweetest wines in the world. Look at that. That's 
going to really have massive flavour of dates and figs and beautiful fortified sherry. See how quickly that's cooking out. And then we're just using a ecological uh, Rioja. So it's had some oak, but it's still really fruity and fairly young. So about half a bottle of that, because I want to drink that with it later as well. So we use it all in the cooking. Just gonna let that burn off now. So really high heat, get it sizzling, burn the alcohol off. So you're gonna reduce that by at least half. Then we're gonna add the beef stock, chuck in the herbs, and I'm just gonna, you could cook this on the hob, but I think for uh, ease, you can just forget about it for three or four hours if we put it in the oven. So I'm gonna put it in a roasting tray, and put it in the oven, and you can just go off on your daily exercise for lockdown or do whatever, 130, 140 for three to four hours until literally your thumb will go straight through and break that meat up. You don't even need a knife and fork. I'm going to put stock in now. There we go. And we'll thicken that up slightly. Put the herbs in. And then it's going to go in for its long, slow bath in all those lovely, beautiful ingredients. That flavour is going to go such a long way. Transferred into the roasting tray, bubbling away nicely. Just going to put a nice smug fit on here. A rectangular cartouche, if you like. And then this, see you. Cheeky cheeks, a good few hours. And then that liquor would have reduced a bit more. And it'll be perfect. Stick it on for three hours to start with, check it. If it needs longer, you'll know if it needs, needs longer because it won't be tender enough. If it needs longer, it's still slightly tough. Give it an extra sort of 20, 30 minutes at a time. Then test again. Three and a half hours later. Give it space so you can see. Moment of truth. Ooh. Oh yeah, look at that. Just melting. Look at that, just falling apart. That is gonna be ridiculous. So normally, I give chefs a rollicking for taking the beef out right now, or the cheek, because it needs to sit until cool in the liquor. But for the purposes of modern technology, oh man, and filming, we want to make the sauce and show that to you. So I'm going to put all this into a sieve. That's all your flavour, goodness, sauce coming through. This will make tonight's dinner and it will make that beautiful, all time, world famous classic tomorrow. Just get most of the moist um, liquid out by moving it around. And when it starts to slow up, you're going to use the back of a spoon and push through that veg to get all the liquid out and all your goodness like so, okay? All that we're going to do then, put it back into a saucepan and reduce it down to a glossy texture and then put some of the ox cheek back through it <coughs> to gloss up and it'll be ready to serve. Sauce reduced and finally ready to plate. You might want to just have a little look at that. Wow. Now this is what starts getting me <laughs> excited. The juices are flowing. And if you don't get excited by this stage, you're either not normal or, well, maybe I'm not normal. But this, this gets me going. Um, so let me just tell you what I'm gonna serve it with. I'm gonna have done an amazing olive oil, obviously Spanish, bar 44 olive oil, pom puree. Look at that though. <laughs> There's nothing healthy about this, okay? But for Thursday night's dinner, it 
so good. So a bit of um, garlic in there, olive oil, and God knows what else unhealthy stuff. You just gotta eat it. I've done some cavolo nero or black kale, which I've just sauteed from raw, kept the bit of crunch on it and stirred through. Lots of people would be glad to know the last, very last of my wild garlic. Here we go. Dope, obviously the dribble. But look at that and the sauce, that Pedro Jimenez red wine sauce. You can't really beat that, to be honest. Rainy Thursday night. And we'll just, a bit of, you know, a bit of health in the greens. A bit of olive oil. So that's a pretty gorgeous dish in my eyes. Get that around there. There we go. And obviously, before I eat this, I need to talk to you about wine. Um, had two wines. <laughs> two wines. <laughs> uh, one of them is the wine uh, we've cooked some of the put in the ox cheek as well. Uh, it's a Rioja. Uh, you all know Rioja. So um, from Benegas Baronia, uh, Rioja Alta, top part of Rioja, which is split into three zones, three regions. Um, this is a Crianza. It's 100% Tempranillo. It's organic, uh, so ecological. Uh, from Young Vines, it spent about seven months in French and American oak. So it's got lovely vanilla, sort of spice and silkiness to it, but it's young, so it's still really fresh and fruit forward. And I think is is a really good sort of um, foil to this rich dish. So go with something like that. And um, most of you would obviously probably go for a sherry, like me as well. So uh, got to have a sherry. And with ox cheeks, this dish reminds me of uh, Andalusia having ox cheeks or oxtail in sherry or wine um, in the tapas bars in, in the towns down there in the sherry region. And Oloroso is your go-to wine. It's a completely oxidized Palomino Fino. So it's bone dry, despite the color, that lovely sort of burnt orange color. You're gonna get sort of toasted uh, dried fruit notes, roasted nuts, and also a bit hints of sweetness on the nose, but real powerful sherry to go with this wine. So go enjoy this. Enjoy both of these, may as well have them both as I poured them. Um, see you tomorrow where we'll be cooking something else with these ox cheeks.